some other definitions that are going to be relevant to us as we work through the process of orthogonal diagonalization. The first one would be, let A be an n by n matrix. The first definition is, A is symmetric. If you take the transpose of A, and you wind up with exactly the matrix A. Now, some examples of matrices that are symmetric. If A is a 2 by 2 matrix, that means whatever we have for the first column must match what we have for the first row. So because I'm not a very creative individual, we'll say that the first row will be the entries 1 and 2. That means that the first column will have to be the entries 1 and 2 as well. The 2, 2 entry can be whatever we want it to be because, well, when we take a transpose, the elements that are on the main diagonal don't actually change. So 1, 2, 2, uh, 17, because it doesn't really matter. Uh, more generally, if A is a 2 by 2 matrix, it's going to take on the following form, A, B, B, C, where A, B, and C are distinct digits. Now, if we were to bump it up to a 3x3, three three, an example might be something like, first row can be anything, we'll just do 1, 2, 3, because again, not particularly creative. If the first row is 1, 2, 3, then the first column has to be 1, 2, 3 as well. Now, what that leaves us with is another little 2x2 two two matrix here that would need to be symmetric as well. So we'll say 4, 5, 5, and 6, following the same scheme as what we saw previously. So there are really six distinct entries when we think about it. If the first row is ABC, first column has to be ABC. If the second column is BDE, the second column, excuse me, if the second row is BDE, the second column has to be BDE as well. And for the 3, 3 entry, that can be anything. So for a 3x3 three three matrix, we would say that the subspace of symmetric matrices would have dimension 6 because there are six different values that you would see in here. Next definition, and this is completely independent of the previous definition. A is orthogonal. If the transpose of the matrix is actually equal to the inverse of a matrix. Now there are very specific cases that are going to make a matrix orthogonal, and I wanted to talk about one of those while we're here. So as an example, I would like to show that the matrix A will make it a 2 by 2 matrix. We'll do 3 over the square root of 10, negative 1 over the square root of 10, positive 1 over the square root of 10, and 3 over the square root of 10. I'd like to show that this matrix is orthogonal. Now the way that we can verify that a matrix is orthogonal is the same way that we would verify that a matrix is an inverse of something else. If I multiply the original matrix by its inverse, then I should wind up with the identity matrix. So what I'm going to do is half of the process. I am going to multiply a times a transpose. Now if I multiply a by a transpose and I get the identity matrix, that lets us know that the transpose is the inverse. Therefore, a would be orthogonal. So with that in mind, we'll recopy down what a is equal to. 3 over the square root of 10, negative 1 over the square root of 10, positive 1 over the square root of 10, and 3 over the square root of 10. The transpose of A would be what I get by replacing the rows with columns. So the first row of A is going to become the first column of A transpose. Then the second row of A is going to become the second column of A transpose. Now with that in mind, we multiply the corresponding components together and add appropriately. So, going across the first row and down the first column, we multiply these entries together. So, 3 over the square root of 10 times 3 over the square root of 10 would be 9 over 10. Plus, negative 1 over the square root of 10 
and negative 1 over the square root of 10 would be positive 1 over 10. For the 1, 2 entry, this will be the first row times the second column. So 3, square, uh, 3 over the square root of 10 times 1 over the square root of 10 would be 3 over 10. Then negative 1 over the square root of 10 times 3 over the square root of 10 will be minus 3 tenths. For the 2, 1 entry, 3 over the square root of 10 times 1 over the square root of 10, that'll be 3 tenths times 3 over the square root of 10 times negative 1 over the square root of 10 will be minus 3 tenths. And finally, 1 over the square root of 10 times 1 over the square root of 10, that'll be 1 tenth. And 3 over the square root of 10 times 3 over the square root of 10 will be 9 tenths. And you can verify that each of these entries will become 1, 0, 0, and 1, which is, in fact, the 2 by 2 identity matrix. Therefore, a transpose is equal to a inverse, meaning that a is orthogonal. I mentioned that there are some very specific situations that make a orthogonal. We're going to investigate some of those in our upcoming videos. How do we create an orthogonal matrix?